Mistakes and saves. This is Moto One. Jet Lawrence has been the king of keeping his feet on the pegs and not getting them kicked off. However, before the roller section, he leaned the bike over too much and ended up doing exactly that, having his inside foot get kicked off because that foot pegs is bending and compressing. But he was able to just continue to keep it on two wheels and act like nothing was really happening. The guy was in control 100% of the time. We're going to keep all eyes on Jet. And this time, his left foot the opposite foot the shift foot ends up falling off before a right hander and the start he's completely off of that foot peg at the moment and just quickly just puts it back on very subtle yet again he doesn't let any of these simple mistakes affect his forward momentum and his confidence at all this guy is going to be hard to beat this year because even when he does make a mistake it's hard to catch the subtleness of it all. The last few laps of Moto2, Jet Lawrence switches up his lines just a little bit because he comes in hot into this right-hander before the uphill. And notice his rear brake foot as he normally would land on this inside here, but he's going to land on the other side of the rut. And He's actually going to land on that rut with his foot peg, which is going to have the suspension bounce and then kick. And that's what's going to force him into almost crashing and giving up the win and the overall to Sexton. Very subtle, yet just a minute little mistake like that. And it's not really even a mistake. It's just the track deteriorating and this stuff becoming hard as curbs. Earlier in the day, this would have been mud. It would have been soft. That foot peg would have been able to compress, and the dirt wouldn't have kicked him at all. But instead, it did the exact opposite. And then just for reference, we can see him earlier in the moto. This is 15 minutes beforehand. Jed is probably a little bit more comfortable because the moto's not over with, and the track is probably in a little bit better shape. You can see him as he jumps to the inside, and doesn't land on that rut and is able to make it happen. But what he probably started doing was trying to stay out of that hole. So he was moving to the other side and just kind of ended up landing on that rut and creating the rebound effect for it. But these guys' ankles, they're going to hurt at the end of the season. Moving to Sexton for just a bit, you can see the dirt is a little bit easier. This is where I can maybe see that that sand tire would have helped for Moto1. But watch Sexton's front wheel. He completely loses traction. And that could have been horrible for a mere mortal. Sever, he keeps it WFO and is able to get that rear end to come back. So when in doubt, there's a saying, when in doubt, pin it. And the reason for that is when you're sliding out like that, if you can keep the forward momentum going, that rear end is going to go directly back into a parallel line. And potentially you're either going to crash harder or you're going to save it. And that was really subtle. Yes, this is all subtle mistakes, but again, making one tiny little mess up could be catastrophic, especially when these guys are riding at 110%. Maybe not Jet, but the rest of the field was definitely giving it their all. AP had a butthole pucker moment where he almost saw a flashback of what happened in Supercross, and this was just a not because he stuck his foot, but just because he was slipping out. So he is this rider right here, and he does the rut beautifully. And because this rut is going off at an angle, this drone doesn't do it justice where if he was just to go straight this wouldn't happen but because it's at an angle the motorcycle is leaned over just enough because you're hitting the jump diagonally not in, not straight so for there that rear end he's doing a beautiful job of drifting up this where the front end is staying in traction and the rear end is sliding out but then it just slips a little bit too much and he's doing a good job with keeping his inside leg there as a counterweight to try to have it happen so this isn't like a mistake this is him just 
using his body as leverage to try to stay on top of that that motorcycle and because of that he dabs the foot just briefly which that could have taken him down but these guys are strong and from here he's able to keep it on the gas and not have the bike rebound on him, and he's able to continue to chase down his teammate, Cooper Webb. I wouldn't really say that this is a mistake by Dylan. He's on the inside here, because if he thought, here, I'm, I'm speculating a little bit, if he thought he was up to par with Sexton, yeah, this is round one, he hasn't raced in a while, so I get him being a little conservative, but we don't need to see him being this conservative in the later rounds, because he won't win the championship if he continues to ride like this, and no hard feelings. Dylan is the rider that I was saying was going to win Fox Raceway, but I digress. Here, he potentially could have had the pass happening, or at least starting, at least pushing forward, but I believe in his mind, Sexton has his number, so he lets off. So here you can see him, as opposed to trying to fight for the position, he just lets it go because he's not sure where Sexton is going to go and he's not pushing the envelope. That's not something that we see little Deegan do later on in this video because he just literally doesn't care and starts pushing. And again, this potentially could be because Dylan doesn't want to get hurt again, and he wants to make sure that he can try to get on the podium. There's lots of variables into not just leaving it all on the line, and that's why the 450 class is a little bit more fluid. That is a great segue because the first step to building confidence is having faith in your ability and Complete Racing Solutions has you covered. Head over to their membership area and it doesn't matter if you're a full-time racer that rides five plus times a week or a weekend warrior or you just have no fitness whatsoever. These programs are designed for you and you'll get so much extra information dedicated to nutrition and hydration, which is huge for recovery and injury prevention. And you'll also get some information on mental development so you don't accidentally end up on your head because again, we're building confidence here. You'll even get some discounts on some high-end products. So make sure you head over to completeracingsolutions.com and hit join. Moto2 AC ended up having some bad luck and it's not that the front end washed out because what actually happened was his foot got caught underneath and it got sucked back. You can see, boom, there's his foot already gotten sucked back and his foot's actually what dragged him down which is unfortunate because that's on the start and now he's got to start from dead last but good news is there is a lot of factory guys that are out so he was able to get back up and do pretty well but it wasn't because he lost traction it was because his he dabbed his inside leg and it got drugged behind him hopefully his ankle is okay Continuing to the 250 class in this off camber before the uphill. Justin Cooper, this rider right here, is fighting with Tom Vial, and he's charging. But this is actually a front end wash where he's in that big deep rut, and that front wheel just does not continue to stay in the rut. And it just goes over where the line actually is. The rear wheel follows, and he simply just falls down. Yep, again, subtle mistake. Ends up losing a lot of time because of it. <laughs> we have Mr. Sushi himself end up getting cross-rutted and going down. The pro circuit guys were struggling just a little bit, but as simple as this, where your front wheel is in one rut and your rear wheel is in another rut, because of how gnarly these tracks get, they literally put you down on the ground because it's just physics, right? That rear end is going to try to suck back in here, but it's on a different rail like a train. So it's going to make you fall down. But really how this happened was it was the previous lip. Because if you watch him off the previous lip, if he wasn't trying to scrub and just kept that bike straight, he would have been able to land straight and continue on. But watch his body language. As that bike just sort of floats underneath him, he is off on the left of the bike. And when he lands, the bike isn't quite straight to where that's where it set him off. And he tries to overcorrect to get back on there. And it's just a balance issue, 
right there. He just ran out of time because that rut started so soon. And if you've made it this far to the end of the video, make sure you stick around, you make a comment down below, and on your way out, hit that subscribe and like button in the notification icon. A lot of you guys have been doing this channel is growing. You guys seem to like these. I will continue to make these. The sponsors like these. It's everybody wins. Good content, the whole bit. As I was saying during the Ferrandis thing is Deegan, he just doesn't care. He's wanting to ruffle feathers and make a statement, make a name for himself. And maybe that's just how he was raised. His father is Brian Deegan for crying out loud. But here you've got Jet Reynolds who really has the line on him and Jet actually makes a mistake. And if it wasn't for his foot dab, Deegan may have been able to push him out of the rut and get the pass done. But because of that foot, that foot was almost like a shield. It blocked Deegan and it ended up taking him down. Because if you see, there is really no room. They were fighting over one line and Deegan could have pushed it. He could have pushed it and made the pass happen if it wasn't for the boot block. That's what I'm going to call it. It's a straight up boot block. So till next time, this is Johnny F and Hopper and make sure you keep it WFO. Bra -da 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 -da.